Does choosing colors for your quilt feel like you're staring at a blank canvas or a test you haven't studied for? I've got a trick up my sleeve that makes choosing colors a snap and boosts your color confidence. Hi, I'm Amy and I make things. In today's video, I'm making color choice just a little bit easier with the help of selvages. Hang around, I'll show you. Now, before we dive in, let's address the elephant in the room. Well, the monkey in the room. Many quilters, both seasoned and beginners, struggle with choosing the right colors for their quilts. You are not alone. Today, I'm revisiting one super simple method of ensuring you create a cohesive, yet uniquely your own colorful quilt. Almost instant gratification. I've spoken about it before in this video, which is linked in the cards and in the description box. But let's dig deeper and really explore the possibilities. First, a little backstory. Selvages, what they are. All those cute little designs or dots along the edge of your printed fabric aren't just for marketing. They're part of the printing process. Each of those little color patches, and this one has 16, represents a separate screen that was printed on the fabric to create that design that you love. Fabric printing is complicated and a labor-intensive process when you really start looking. Besides being super interesting, if you know, you're a nerd like me, those cute little dots or designs are your training wheels. These are colors that are guaranteed to match your featured fabric so you can pull other prints and blenders from your stash or scraps according to these little swatches and you know you can be assured that your fabrics will coordinate because it's already done. I want to show the process entirely from inspiration print and pulling and testing fabrics to finish quilt. I chose this pattern, Bed of Roses by Laundry Basket Quilts and there's a link in the description box. Then I had an idea. I thought it would be fun to show two entirely different color mood versions of the same quilt to really drive home the process and the results. Anna and I have wildly different color preferences. So I chose one inspiration fabric and they chose a different one. And we proceeded to dig through my fabrics to match the dots. The beauty of this method is that there's very little decision making about anything. Does it match the dot or come kind of close or doesn't it? We had a great time auditioning fabrics and figuring out what matched, the mood or vibe of the prints and what we didn't like. I'll tell you, finding matches for Anna's fabric selection was much harder than mine. You know my whole buy what you like shopping philosophy. Well, it bit me in the booty a little bit during this experiment. I like bright, busy, and vibrant, so my stash is filled with bright, busy, vibrant fabrics, which meant we had to dig deep to find the softer, earthier, desaturated tones that Anna prefers. Go ahead and hit that like button if you can relate, but I think we did pretty well. Remember, close enough is good enough, and it makes your quilt even more dynamic. We paid attention to value and tone and ended up with a really great palette. One thing to note about this rose fabric, the base fabric is a darker neutral beige, not white, so we took that into consideration as well. Of course, pulling things for my dino fabric was much easier to match from my stash and scraps Go figure. But here is the footage of that process and we had a lot of fun.
we collected fabrics for two quilts based on the selvages of our inspiration fabrics. Now I will kit them up, sew them together, and report back at the end of the month with hopefully beautiful finished results. You'll have to let me know what you think then. On the last color video, I received many excited comments about the selvage method, and I encourage you to actually play with it. Armed with your selvage inspired color palette, it's time to bring your quilt to life. Find an inspiration fabric. And remember, that fabric doesn't have to be part of your quilt. It's just your starting point. Pull your colors, make a baby quilt. At least a baby quilt. No, specifically a baby quilt and here's why. Number one, it's easy and quick to complete. Number two, it's big enough to really get the feel for the colors and the color balance. Number three, it's easy to quilt and finish on your domestic machine. Number four, it's a great size to donate. So you're not stuck with a sample that gets shoved in a drawer or for which you must find a use. And number five, and most important, if the quilt doesn't turn out the way you envisioned, babies don't care. <laughs> if the quilt didn't turn out the way you'd hoped, evaluate it, try to figure out why. Compare it to your inspiration fabric and make notes about what to do next time. Is it a color issue? A value issue? A proportion issue? The very best part of this process is that it will build color confidence. The more you do it, the more you develop and grow that part of your brain. It's science. So next time, it will be easier. That's the trick to getting better at anything. It's no secret and not really a trick. You learn, you practice, you evaluate, and you iterate. Fancy word for do it again with the new information you've gathered. And there you have it. With the power of the humble selvage, you've cracked the code to color confidence. No more second guessing or feeling overwhelmed by endless color options. No more resorting to a pre-matched bundle and then not knowing what to do with all the scraps. Use the fabric you love as your starting point, and you will create unique quilts that are full of your personality and charm. If you want more information about using color and quilting, check out one of the videos on the screen. I hope you do play with this easy method, and I hope you never forget that you make the world more beautiful just by being in it. I'm Amy and I'll see you next time.